these are diseases, they're inborn errors of metabolism, and they really affect the propionate pathway. And so what that is, is, you know, when the body is breaking down proteins and some fatty acids and, and getting energy from those, there is a sequential pathway. And the final stages of that are the development of propionyl CoA, which is then converted to methylmalonic, methylmalonyl CoA, which is then converted to succinyl CoA. So in propionic acidemia, there is a defective enzyme that catalyzes the conversion of propionyl CoA to methylmalonyl CoA. And in methylmalonic acidemia, it's the step after that. So there's no conversion of methylmalonyl CoA to succinyl CoA. And so you get a buildup of the different of the different kind of precursors and, and then metabolites from them. So in propionyl propionic acidemia, then you get a buildup of propionyl CoA. In methylmalonic acidemia, you get a buildup of methylmalonyl CoA and to some extent propionyl CoA. But, but these then have metabolites at themselves. And then when these build up, they inhibit the mitochondria and energy production. So they're called intoxication type disorders. And so both of them have similar symptoms. Um, and the hallmark is acute metabolic decompensation. So that when there is an increased, either because of an increased protein intake or an increased protein catabolism because of an illness or something in the body where the body needs more energy, then you get a breakdown of proteins and then a buildup of these uh, metabolites, which cause, which then inhibit the mitochondria. And so there's a catabolic kind of emergency. And then you get buildup of other metabolites like ammonia. So these kids become lethargic, even go into coma. Uh, and there's just a shutdown of the of the energy producing pathways in these acute decompensations. So that's the hallmark, but even, and, and these diseases then are controlled primarily by diet. Uh, so there's very special formulas and very special feeding where really take out some of the amino acids that cause the problems. Um, but even when these children and, and adults are doing fairly well from that point of view, um, there's ongoing damage. You know, there's damage to the brain, the CNS, there's damage to the kidneys. And, and many of these children then develop uh, chronic renal disease or renal failure. And there's damage to the heart. And, and many of these kids then have uh, cardiomyopathies from that. So those are the primary ones, but it's, it's really systemic. It also affects the muscles and it affects the bones as well. So, so these diseases are, are universal, uh, but there is a higher incidence in some ethnic groups and in some geographies uh, because of consanguineous marriages, but, but they're universal. Uh, they, are, they're, they both are diagnosed in newborn screening. Uh, so the newborn screen looks for acetyl uh, <coughs> carnitine, excuse me, acetyl carnitine, um, which is elevated in both of these. And then when the patients come in, get this, have this positive newborn screen, then they undergo, you know, now in the United States, especially it's genetic analysis, which will identify which of the diseases it has. In patients that have serious forms of these diseases, you know, because, you know, with the enzyme, there can be different levels of function. But the children with serious diseases are often in a metabolic crisis before the newborn screen comes back. So some of these children never leave the newborn, never leave the hospital. They go from the newborn nursery, they're poor feeding, then they go into this metabolic decompensation, and then the newborn screen comes back to help identify the problem. The milder forms, then they can be identified by newborn screens, and then they're called back in. Thank you.